Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of David's Reflexology channel. A little while ago, in fact quite a few months ago, um, we put a video on showing how to work the spine. This was done as a Facebook Live video. Um, the only problem with Facebook Live is that the video kind of gets hidden um, behind any other videos that might be put on and you have to scroll back and scroll back and scroll back. It's not Google searchable either. So I've decided to reshoot and put this one on the YouTube channel so you can find it nice and easily. Um, it is Google searchable. And also today we're going to do far more than we did in that little uh, Facebook Live video. We're going to do four techniques for working the spine. We're going to do the classic Jubilee College push in, roll up, roll down. We're going to do a hooking technique working back down the spine. We're going to do a technique called spreading the spinal impulse. And we're going to work the uh, erector spinae muscles, which are the bands of muscles that go either side of the spine. So there's far more in this video than there was in the original one anyway. Before I get started on teaching you how to work the spine uh, the way that we teach at Jubilee College, just a little word um, so that you can understand the principle behind what we call the push-in, uh, uh, roll-up, roll-down technique. Uh, so if I just move this foot slightly out of the way so that you can see. We believe that zone one isn't two different zone ones on the feet. Uh, we follow the principle that actually zone one overlaps because we don't have two heads. We haven't got two pituitaries. We don't have two hypothalamuses. We haven't got two spines physically on our body. We've just got one. And when we do the roll up, roll down technique, it creates a C shape as we would roll up, roll down. If you have that C shape on one side of the foot and then you have another, so we kind of got that C shape for this one, then if you have another C shape, the other side of the foot, and if you do have zone one overlapping, those two C shapes will create a circle. Transfer that onto the spine and we have a column, the spinal column. So this technique allows you to work right round the spine rather than missing pieces off. The other thing that we do at Jubilee is we have a principle that when we're doing a technique, we would never raise the arms above the shoulder. This is so that you don't get an awful tight trapezius when you're working on the spine and other reflexes as well. When I was taught originally, I was taught a technique that it was a case of you laid the hand flat on the uh, sole of the foot and then we had to raise our arm up like this. It was kind of really, you know, quite ah, a bit tight, you know, and then work down, do a thumb walk down the spine. That's what you've been taught and it works for you and your clients love it. You don't need to change. All we're doing is just showing you a different way of working and I hope you enjoy it. So, when working the spine, we're going to be working from the corner of the heel up to the malleolus. So we've got our coccyx and our sacrum. From the malleolus, we have got the lumbar spine and you'll be able to feel a little knobbly bit just here. Uh, that denotes where our lumbar spine starts and ends. And then we have got from the knobbly bit to the bunion point, that is our thoracic spine. And then from the bunion point to the joint of the big toe, that is the cervical spine. The spine does not run up the rest of the big toe. That's where you've got the brain stem and uh, you don't have the vertebrae running up through the cranium. So to start our technique, we would start at the bottom of the spine and we would push in, roll up, roll down. Push in, roll up, 
roll down, push in, roll up, roll down. So you can get the idea of what this push in, roll up, roll down technique is like. When we reach the medial malleolus, we're then going to come round and sit at the side of our client. So our arms are going to be um, straighter on to the reflex that we want to work. So it's now going to be push in, roll up, roll down. Push in, roll up, roll down. Now the technique starts to make more sense when you're working from the lumbar spine upwards because you can roll up over the bony edge and you can roll down underneath the bony edge. You can actually feel yourself creating this C shape that I was explaining earlier on. Now there's no rush with this. We don't do this technique fast. We do this technique with precision. So push in, roll up, roll down. When you start to get towards where the big toe is, can you see how I've brought my thumb and my fingers in so that I can support the big toe? Last thing you want to do is to have the big toe pushing up against the other toes. I'm gonna show this at a different angle. I'm going to have the camera um, at a downward angle so you can uh, see it from the sort of angle that you would be looking at it if you were at the base of the feet. So working with this new angle, push in, roll up, roll down, push in, roll up, roll down. Hopefully you can see that roll that I'm creating a little easier. And now, when we come around to the other side, we're going to bring that technique. And hopefully you can really see that push in, roll up, roll down, push in, roll up, roll down, push in, roll up, roll down. Push in, roll up, roll down. Push in, roll up, roll down. It is slow, it is deliberate, it is very thorough, this technique. Your clients will be able to really, really feel the spine being worked in a most thorough manner. Okay, so I'm at the joint of the big toe. So that is the spine worked going up the spine. We're going to work the uh, other foot now for a different technique. And this is a finger hooking technique and we're going to work downwards. So what we're going to do now is a hooking technique. <clears throat> hooking technique, of course, from Dr. William Fitzgerald, if you remember your uh, reflexology history. We're going to use our middle finger. You can use your index finger. I, I just prefer using this one. Place your thumb onto the sole of the foot. Do support the big toe because what we're going to do is we're going to be working back down the foot now. So we're going to start from this joint and we're going to start pointing down and roll down until you're at a 90 degree angle. That's as far as you're going to go. It's almost as if you're kind of sewing a needle through a piece of fabric. That's the best way that I can describe hook work. So from pointing down to pointing in, pointing down to pointing in, and you want to just be pushing in as you roll down. So hooking down the spine. Do bring your supporting hand down with you as you're working. Your thumb also comes down the foot as you work down the spine. So let's just do this one again. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a different angle. This one will be from the angle I'm sitting at, 
so you can see what the thumb is or rather isn't doing. Okay, so my thumb is placed on the sole of the foot and my working finger is going to be on the top of the spine and we're going to be coming down working down the spine and can you see how my supporting hand I just bring down a little bit to support the heel when I get to this point my working thumb or rather sort of supporting thumb doesn't actually pinch if it pinched I wouldn't be able to kind of give this kind of action as I'm doing the hooking technique um, if it was pinching, I would just be rolling over the spine. So that's why I'm here, being able to create a pull as I hook into the spine. So let's just start again. So you can see the thumb doesn't actually do that much, but it's just there in a supporting role. The most important thing about this bit of the video is showing how we are not doing a pinch. As soon as you do a pinch you can't pull and that's what we want to do with our thumb is to pull the finger into the reflex make a good contact with it. Okay so that's how to do a hooking technique working down. While we're at this angle we're going to do a spinal sweep. This is spreading the spinal impulse. We're going to be using the flat surface of the index finger. And by the way, just in case anybody's wondering, at no point are we using any cream, oil, wax, anything like that on the spine reflex. This is because we're wanting precise pushing in, um, no slipping. There's no slipping going on at all with this. This is now going to be a light sweep. So again, you don't need any medium while you are doing this technique. And so you can see that I'm just spreading the side of my finger across the spine. When we get to this point here, I'm now pushing my finger across the spine. So instead of working onto the spine reflexes, we are sliding over the spine, spreading that spinal impulse. Now with all techniques, I have a little rule, and that is if a client's going, oh, that's nice, do it again, do it more. If a client's going, um, what are you doing? Move on because if they're enjoying something, you want them to remember the enjoyable part of the treatment, because then they're gonna want to book again. So that is working the hooking technique and spreading the spinal impulse technique. For this next part of the technique, I am actually gonna use some cream, because we're going to work the erector spinae group of muscles. Now this isn't on the sole of the feet, nor is it on the side of the foot. It is on the edge of the foot. Now if you imagine the band of muscles that goes either side of your bony spine, that means that the erector spinae muscles must be right next to this bony edge. So of course they are just here underneath. Um, just underneath this area here. So it's sort of about 45 degrees to the foot. You can, that's why I'm keeping it at this kind of angle so you can see that. It is a soft, fleshy part of the foot, mimicking soft muscle. We've been working on a hard bony edge of the foot, mimicking the hard boniness of the spine. So now it's time to work the softness. The, the actual muscles. So we're going to put a little dab of lotion on. It's all you should need. And we're just going to spread it. And what we're going to be working with 
this, we're going to be working with this area of the hand. This is called the thenar prominence. This is actually a finger-free reflexology technique that I'm going to be showing you, so you get a little bit of added bonus. And we are going to place that here, and we're going to slide all the way down. And it's a lovely push into the musculature of the foot. It also feels gorgeous on your hands to do this because if you can see how my hand is, it's actually spreading out um, my hand here. So it's spreading the muscles across here. Um, so it's actually really, really nice for you as a therapist. And again, do this as many times as you want to. It's absolutely lovely, gorgeous, relaxing sweep. Okay, so that is the four techniques. So we've had rolling up, rolling down. We've had hook work. We've had the spinal sweep. And we've had the erector spinae sweep. Now what I'm going to show you is how you can count the vertebrae on the feet. So what we're going to be doing now is working with a spinal reference chart. It's also known as a spinal subluxion chart. Um, you can download these off uh, Google Images. Um, there's masses of them on the internet. The one that I particularly like to use is actually Tony Porter's um, spinal reference chart, purely because it is so clear, so uncluttered. Um, if you have a look on the internet, you'll, get to, you'll, you'll see what I mean. They really, really do get a little bit um, busy, I, I guess is what you would uh, call it. Um, so it's a good uh, chart, this one. So what we're gonna do is I have got some colouring pens and we're now going to draw in the vertebrae on the spine so that you can see how the reflexes match to the real spine and then you're going to know exactly where you're working because the spine isn't just about working for bad backs it's about working the nerve innervations to the organs so if there's a problem with a particular organ, you also want to be working that particular nerve innervation so that you can then send the messages to that organ so the body's natural healing mechanisms can start occurring. So there is an easy way of remembering how many vertebrae there are on the spine. And that is that for the cervical spine, there are seven of these. So you could say there are seven days of the week. For the thoracic spine, there are 12 thoracic vertebrae. So you could say there are 12 months of the year. For the lumbar spine, there are five vertebrae. So you could say we work five days of the week. And then all you have to remember is five uh, sacral fused vertebrae and four coccyx vertebrae. So seven days of the week, 12 months of the year, you work for five days a week, and then all you've got to remember is five and four. For some people, they do have different numbers um, of vertebrae. Sometimes it's four fused sacral, sometimes it's five fused sacral. Um, just as a, a little point there. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna get our little coloring pens and let's start having a play. So we're going to put in seven vertebrae. So we're gonna start here first, and we're going to pop another one just at this point here. And all I've now got to do is to fit five vertebrae in. Now they do get larger as we go down the spine. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven vertebrae on the cervical spine. Okay, let's choose another color. So I go for a nice bright orange for this one. 
So, our thoracic then, 12 vertebrae, and we're going to start at the bottom with a little indentation just before you get to a knobbly bit. So that's going to be our 12th vertebrae. So we're going to put our first one in here, and then, because it's a long one, we're going to put a line just halfway, and that's going to be our sixth or seventh. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve thoracic vertebrae. Now it's time for the lumbar spine and we're going to choose a nice blue colour just here. So we'll place the fifth lumbar spine vertebrae in just here. And we are going to start at number one just here. Two, three, four, and there we go, there's our fifth one just there. Okay, so now for the sacrum and coccyx, let's choose a, a nice green colour just here. So we've got potentially five sacral, so one, two, three, four, five, and then tell you what, let's just start again with, because I've only brought uh, four colours down, I thought I'd brought five, but never mind. So we've got four coccygeal, one, two, three, four. This will now enable you to know where you are working as far as the spinal innovations is concerned. I hope you've enjoyed uh, learning a little bit about working the spine, and understanding that the spine isn't just for working a bad back, also understanding the difference between the actual bony spine and the muscles of the spine, and that the techniques I've taught you, you might find useful and add them into your routine. Uh, guys. If you've enjoyed this video, do click the like button. Uh, do click subscribe as well, so that I can, uh, YouTube rather, can notify you of when I put new videos up. And do please stay safe and stay well.